We are now live on Facebook. We are going to give people some five minutes so that we start around 10. Eh? So let's give people just a few minutes. Oh, I can see three people online. We are giving people just a few minutes and then we start. Welcome everyone. We are about to start. Let's just give our uh, participants like two minutes and then we start. I think Esther, we can now start. The rest will find us uh, to measure answer. We have started. So, Karibu Sana, everyone. Lam Kenya appreciates your, your support by joining this uh, live stream. Today, we are going to learn about seeds and everything about seeds. So, Karibu Nisana, please feel free to ask questions after the session. 
And I'm privileged to invite one of our master trainer, Esther. She's also going to introduce herself and where she's from, where she works, and then we start. So thank you and welcome. And you're here to learn. And from these lessons that we learned today, we hope that uh, you can disseminate to other farmers and other policy makers so that we have seeds in our systems in agroecology. So Karim Musana uh, Esther, you can now start. Thank you so much, Madam Ratemo. I thank you for giving me this giving me this opportunity so that I can share what I have with the other people. I know I don't know everything. And uh, so we are going to just learn what um, I have. And thank you so much, uh, the other master trainers for joining us. And um, you are so much welcome. All the other people who are listening today, uh, you are so much welcome to be with us and uh, let us learn together. So, good morning. So today we are talking about seeds and why do we have seeds? How do we grow food, the uh, seeds? And how do we do, do we go about saving our seeds? Um, I'll start. I'll, I'll start by maybe outlining what we are going to learn today. Uh, we are going to, to look at the history of the seed. Why do we have to save seed? The type of seeds that we have, pollination of seeds and um, pollination challenges, steps to harvest and clean and store seeds, longevity of seeds after you save and uh, resources. And uh, of course, my final thoughts. Um, I'll first start by preaching to you this morning, and um, we will. I will preach from Genesis first, verses eleven to thirteen. Mm -hmm. Then God said, "Let the Lord, the Lord produce vegetables, seed-bearing plants." and trees on the land that bear fruits with seeds in it, according to their various kind. And it was so. Verse 12, the Lord produced vegetables, plants bearing seeds according to their kind, and, and trees bearing fruits with seeds in according to their kinds. And God saw that was good. And, the, and the, number 13, verse 13, and there was everything, and there was morning, and the, that day. Then God said, I give you every seed. I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be your food. My preaching adds there. So you have heard with seed, that is where we shall get our food. Let us go to the history of the, of the seeds. Um, we can ask ourselves first, where did the companies, the seed companies come from? Uh, when we look at the history, you'll find that um, in 1854, there was no, farmers ex just exchanged seed. Farm, they said they saved their own seed. They had no, uh, they even never thought that seed can be an issue in this world. Then uh, there came a first company uh, of the world of the seeds in the in the world, and in night in eighteen sixty six, the first commercial seed producing company was launched, which was uh, selling cabbage, uh, kales, and things like um, collards, all of them. And uh, in nineteen forty five, 
we started now getting the hybrids. Uh, the, um, by then they were in the in the west, but with time we started getting them in the in our region in East Africa, in in Africa, and so at the end of the day, uh, we have so many um, companies that are selling seeds. We have um, seeds that are even have I mean seed companies that are even producing. Um, Ascending chemicals like herbicides, um, so that they can they can they, they are they are selective to their seeds, and up to date, we have like 10, 10 seed companies in the world that like account for sixty seven percent of the seeds that are in the market. Of course, I know you know some of the seed companies that um, dominate the world. Yeah, like, uh, like one I think, I know you are thinking about, how do we grow our own seeds? And where does it come? How, how do we start it? How do we start growing our own seeds? Um, let, me, let me just say this. In, since I started knowing myself as Esther and the way I love seeds and the way I love farming, I have a saying, I say, my seed, my life. My seed, my life, that is my saying. Let us now go, we'll now go to, to define what is a seed. A seed is the embryo of life. It is actually the beginning of life. Look at everything in the world that doesn't start with a seed or an embryo. So in the real sense, seed is the beginning of life of everything in the world. Seed, any seed has a potential to grow to maturity and to be food. And uh, of course, nowadays we see seeds having a lot of influence in human life. Because if we don't have seed, then we don't have food at all. Um, there, of course, there are so many people coming up with um, ideologies about seeds. But let us say with, uh, without seeds, then we don't even have food for tomorrow or even today. We don't. We are going to look at the seed right from the, from the from the stage one when it is a small seed, then when it is start germinating, then up to when it become a, uh, it will become food, and then uh, for those who want to say seeds, up to the time it becomes seed to to replant in the next season. So what do we, how do we go about this? Of course, you'll have to prepare your land. First of all, you'll have to know what, which seed do you want to grow. We shall see it there, there down a little bit. But now, when we are growing our seeds, you must prepare your site very well, especially for the small seeds. Let us talk about um, cabbage. You'll have to prepare a seed bed. If you are planting leeks, those ones you'll have to prepare seed beds. But if you're planting things like cereals, then you, you plant them direct. So for them, you don't have to, to have a lot of uh, preparation of the land, apart from making sure the land is well, well cultivated and um, good application of uh, manure. Uh, we say it is very important to make sure, especially when you're planting the small seeds, you have to make your soil a, a little bit fine so that the seed can be able to come out strongly. Because if you put some uh, scarce materials, they will prohibit that uh, seed from coming up. Then, um, I know you have learned a lot about manure since Monday. 
So um, you'll have to have your ready compost. I I'm not going to repeat this because I know you have learned with uh, Mr. Derito on Monday about uh, compost preparation. So I'll not repeat, but your compost must be ready, very com highly composted, like cured before you take it to the, to the, to the garden or before you start growing your seeds. The, um, we are talking about the seeds. Uh, I, as I said there before, um, be, when you're planting big, big uh, seed, like maize or like maize or cereals, then in that case, you are, you are, you are, you will have, you don't have a lot of preparation in, of the land. You will just make sure your farm is well cultivated. And again, you will sort out the seeds that you are, you are planting. Of course, you don't want to plant seeds that are, are moldy. They have mold or they have rotten. You'll have to select good seeds. They should be whole. Ensure your seeds, especially the maize, should have the heart. You know, like a small thing that looks like heart, eh? that it should be whole, uh, not, not invested by the pest or any disease. Ensure they are clean. Okay, when you have planted your seeds in the garden, um, how do you make sure that you, 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 you prepare your plant to produce very good seed or food in future? Number one, seed management in the land. You must make sure that plant get enough water. Do not waterlog the plants, but make sure they get enough water uh, you, of course, you, a lot of, you weed the plants to ensure that they, they don't compete with other, with other weeds in the chamber. Uh, ensure you don't hurt the plant as it grows. Maybe you can use your hands or a hole, uh, but ensure you don't hurt that, uh, you don't hurt that plant when growing. Again, when you're growing your crop or seeding, uh, make sure you, you don't put them so close. If they are so close, or like look at the first photo here, they are, they are like, they are so closely spaced. So in this case, you'll have to remove, we, do, we call it thinning. You remove the ones that are not so healthy, or you can decide. If the ones that are not so healthy are, are very small, then you can uproot them and put some, them somewhere else to wait for them to, to continue growing. And if the big ones are ready for consumption or can be used um, uh, for planting, then you, you remove those ones. Um, some people will also, uh, get them and uh, put them for animals. Yeah. Again, when you're growing your seed, ensure that that plant in the garden has enough compost, have enough uh, nutrients. Like for example, if all, all plants, most of the plants need a lot of um, zinc, phosphorus, boron, nitrogen, and you will find uh, some some nutrients, and unlock others to be used by plant. Like for example, if you apply so much zinc on plant, so much zinc on plant, and that zinc doesn't have phosphorus, then that plant will not be nice. It will still look weak. Look at that plant that is there. This plant shows uh, a purple color, meaning there is deficiency of phosphorus. So if, if this plant, uh, so what you're supposed to do, you, you have to balance um, your, on your application, phosphorus and zinc, so that, uh, that zinc can support uh, uptake. 
of the phosphorus. Most of the, uh, of the plant nutrients will help each other to, to, to be uptaken by the plant. Again, the zinc is very good because it helps the plant to even break the seed to break dormancy and to grow strongly. Uh, nitrogen is very good. It makes the plant look green. Yeah. Um, and the, the phosphorus makes the plant look at least uh, strong. Uh -huh. My slides are not moving. Hey, that Hello. Hello. Uh, maybe you can stop sharing um, and then I help you to to the slides. Okay, it have it has moved. Then continue. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Another thing is that uh, when we are doing our um, crop, I mean crop crop, uh, I mean seed cultivation, you have to ensure that they have enough calcium. If you don't put a lot of enough calcium, then your plants will not have, especially the ones that for, are for seeding, most of the time they die because they can't retain a lot of um, water if they don't have enough calcium. So ensure whenever you're growing, um, especially the, we call them squash family, Akinakakabitaes, ensure they have enough, enough calcium because they, they actually have, I mean, they need a lot of water. So ensure that you give enough calcium. If they don't have enough calcium, look at that plant, the way it will look like. That is how it will look like and um, not looking so good. And again, whenever you are growing your plants, ensure you have enough Sorry for that. Um, um, I'm, I'm talking about, I was talking about the diseases. For some, for some beans, especially look at the, look at this bean. It has been um, affected by seedborne disease. Most of the time, if it lacks some, some calcium in it, this, this is what will happen. Um, there, are, there are some other diseases uh, for serious. Uh, look at this. This is um, uh, andracnose. We also have beans, mosaic. Most of them, are, the, uh, most of these diseases are brought by lack of calcium in, in, uh, in seeds, in, in, in a plant. Again, this is calcabit. Uh, look at that. If it doesn't have, those are some of the diseases that affect the, the seeds as they grow. Uh, those are caca beets. They're affected by mosaic virus. Um, I believe you have seen these things in the garden. And so ensure whenever you're growing your crops, you, you have enough calcium and again, I, I, have, I believe you have, you remember how when Dr. Mihindo was training yesterday about diseases, how to treat your, your crops. So on IPM, so ensure all the methods are well utilized when you're growing your crops. How to control seedborne diseases? Most of the seedborne diseases, um, are caused by pathogens. So, well, make sure uh, most of the time, whenever you you have seed bone disease, um, you can do hot water treatment or hot air or steam. 
Ah, yeah, yeah, for the radiation, I don't know how many people will do it, but hot water normally is good. You pass the seed through the, the hot water. Okay, when you're growing crops, I mean seeds or any crop, you also have to ensure that your soil is healthy. If your soil is not healthy, then even the seeds that you're going to produce as food or as seeds, they not be healthy. And so you will be, um, you will be fighting every now and then with the diseases and pests. So ensure that the soil is healthy, even the crop that you're growing, the seed itself is healthy and it's free from pests and diseases. Again, we say, ensure that the seeds that you're planting are, are resistant. Look, if you're growing things that, that are not resistant to your area of operation, like for example, in my area, it's very hot. If I bring seeds that are, that, that are very delicate or uh, for high land um, weather, then in my area, they might not really do well. So ensure the seeds that you're planting at your area, they are resistant to, to any kind of uh, weather adversities or any disease adversities. Again, when you're doing your growing of food or seeds, ensure you do crop rotation. This will ensure that um, you don't have a lot of pests and diseases don't repeat themselves and your, your lad stays uh, free. I mean, you break the cycles. Again, good hygiene of the farm. Uh, most of the farms, you see somebody is growing food or seeds, and then you find there, um, there are things that are in the garden that, uh, that don't even decompose. Like, for example, a lot of, a lot of um, plastic materials in the farm old shoes, old clothes. Of course, they are not going to decompose. And so they are dirty. They are dirtifying your, your shamba. That farm doesn't look hygienic. Again, keep checking on your soil pH. Whenever you're growing your seeds, ensure the, you, 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 you keep checking your soil pH to ensure that you, you, have, you have good, good um, results. Because if the soil is so acidic, then you, you tend to lose some seeds. If it is so alkaline, then sometimes the production is very low. Again, when you're doing your planting, ensure timely planting and timely sowing, planting, I mean timely sowing and timely harvesting. Sometimes if you do against season, for example, for now, uh, we are in March. Most of people are preparing to plant their farms because it will rain in April. And April, May, June, there will be maybe, it will be a, a little bit wet on the ground. Then from there, it dries a little bit up to October. If you plant your seeds in January, when there is no rain, then uh, your expectations of getting high level high or high yield, then that, that goes through. If you plant at this season, when everyone is planting, when there is enough rains, then your expectation of getting good yield goes high. Um, again, when we are doing uh, seeding or food growing, ensure that you're doing companion planting Companion planting is planting of, of uh, beneficial crops together. Um, like for example, if you're growing cucumber, you're growing maize, you can grow them together so that the, the cucumber can, can provide, a cucumber uh, prohibits some pests from attacking the maize and then the, cu the cucumber can thrive in the maize Sometimes you can do beans and maize to ensure that the beans provide nitrogen in the soil and then the, the beans cover the ground and then the plant, the, the maize covers this, I mean, provides 
paid for the beans. Yeah, such. Again, when you produce, you are produce for seeding, especially for seeding, ensure that you have good buffer. Create a good buffer zone. Like for example, if you are somewhere and your neighbors are growing hybrids, let, let us talk for example, they are, you're growing, you, you want to grow open pollinated seeds and you want to preserve them. Your neighbor is growing GMOs. If you don't have good buffer, especially life, life buffer, then in that case, you are sure you are not going to get clean or pure breed as you wanted because of pollination. So for seeding, ensure that you create good buffer. You can grow nature grass along. You can grow, grow maize. Even maize can, can, can help. I mean, sorry, even uh, sorghum can help. If you're producing maize, then on your buffer is millet, then that can work or life fence. Ensure whatever you're growing your seed from, you create a buffer such that your crops are not inter, inter I mean, they are not cross-pollinated by your neighbor's um, crops. On the other hand, you will have to, whenever you're growing your crops for seeding, ensure that uh, you treat them against pests and diseases. I'm not going to repeat that because I know Dr. Mihindo yesterday did a good job. So you can use garlic, you can use um, eggshell to deter the cutworms from the soil. Again, you can, um, you can use ash. Uh, ash, remember we have a limitation of using ash and um, the atomaceous earth, I don't know whether you know, it kills slugs. Um, again, as remember what um, Mr. Dejito talked about on Monday, that if your soil is well composted with good and well decomposed manure compost, then in that case, your crop will be healthy and it will not be attacked by any kind of uh, pests or diseases. These are some of the things that you can use to, to control pests and diseases. Sulfur glue, you learned about it yesterday with Dr. Mihindo, so I'm not going to repeat that. Um, yeah, let us go to the type of seeds that we have. We talk about hiring seeds. Hiram seeds are our own seed, the indigenous seed, open pollinated seed. They are the varieties we, we desire to keep because they, they, they keep on and on and on over years, many years. So um, if possible, whenever we are keeping uh, our seeds, let us ensure we are, we are keeping um, Hiram seeds. Uh, for vegetables, uh, normally, the, especially the ones you see in the, in the groceries, normally, I don't know whether we have those which are higher loom, but uh, of course, for serious, yes. For example, seeds that are hybrid or GMOs, we don't keep them. We don't save them. Why? Number one, they are not reliable. Most of them have gene terminant, meaning when they grow, you grow them next, some may not even grow very well. Again, some mothers will cross, uh, cross pollinate very fast, meaning you'll not get the pure breed that you wanted. Others will not give you the desired variety that you wanted. You, you think you saw the first generation seed of hybrid and you wanted to grow it so that you can get, still get that one. But in the real sense, it will not be a pure breed. You let up 
uh, having um, a very low quality seeds. They are, they are actually not the best for, for keeping. The, again, some people will think they are keeping the hybrid for, for several reasons, like taste, colors, size, which of course, when you are preserving the hybrid may not happen. They, they will disappoint you. Okay, how do we find higher room seeds? Most of the time, our higher room seeds are with our friends. You will not go to uh, an agrovet and buy higher room seeds. They, they exist just locally with our mummies, with our grannies. So whenever you find, like in my community, we have a seed, we call it Givigo. That Givigo, you will only, or only find it with some people somewhere, they have kept it for themselves. So even if you go to an agrovet, you'll never find it. So uh, most of the time they have, they are with your friends and your neighbors and even other farmers that you associate with. Again, as organization that keeps seeds, like Zibiak, like Seashep, uh, like Seed Savers, like uh, Bio, Bio, Bio G, they, they are seed savers, all of them. And so if you want those higher room seeds, of course you'll get them from there. I don't know whether for now they have them because um, farmers are planting and I know men, like in sea shape many have come for them. Uh, so I'm not so sure whether you get it from other people. Um, what are the benefits of sa saving our seeds? Number one, in engaging in life, in cycle of life. Definitely when we plant this time, the next time we, we know we have food and we have seeds. It's not like when we go to a, 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 an agrovet, you plant, you, you buy seeds, and then next time you'll have to come back to buy another seed because the, the, the other ones were, were GMOs or they were hybrid, and, and so you can grow them again. So with the, with the higher room seed, you are sure you are contributing to the circle of life. Number two, to preserve our higher room varieties, like to preserve our Givigo seeds. Hmm? Those ones that are, are still maintaining. I don't know whether you, you still, uh, some you, you may miss, like me, I miss the, the, the maize that we used to eat when I was young. Especially when you lost it. You, you could um, smell the, the roasted maize from very far away. Today, even, even when you are there, when you are roasting it, there is no smell, there is no that nice smell. There's no that taste that you feel like you, you want it. So uh, we would like to preserve that variety that is ha had very desire, highly desirable, uh, highly desirable variety, I mean, uh, qualities. Again, we want to encourage genetic diversity. If your area has a certain kind of seed, my area has a, a certain kind of seed that adapts to that area. So we want to preserve that seed. So that's why we are saving that seed. And again, to save on money. Do you want to keep going to buy seeds every after every after every planting season you don't want to so this is how we participate in the circle of life by preserving our own seeds uh -huh. look at look at these varieties that are in these pictures and go back to your area have you seen such kind of uh, maize. Look at yellow maize. I can see black maize, blue maize, maroon maize. Uh, some, some look like green maize. Look at this maize that is having so many colors. 
we used to see them there before, but are they, are they very common today? Today we see white maize, very tall because they have of course been uh, researched for the, they want to, to produce very many, many seeds, I like, like very, they say they want to produce a plant with high yield. So you'll find like pioneer is very tall with so many seeds, but not tasty. Um, as I said there before, our maize was tasty. And so, um, and maybe our maize wasn't so long. This is so long. Yeah, um, hmm, look at those maize. Look at those ladies there. They are, they are carrying it. You feel like they are in touch with their seeds. So um, we want to preserve that variation of seeds, diversity of seeds. Okay, now look at this maze. You see the way they have filled their kennel, like it's coming like a cub. Um, there's a maze, uh, if you look good, look at this. This one has a dent on top. It has a dent and this one has a calf. This one, you, we used to see this one there before because they, they are very good. They, 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 um, they are hard. These ones are, are hard enough. They're even not, uh, uh, easy to be attacked by like weevil, but these ones, the the newly varieties, they um they have uh, that dent. They are soft. Of course, the the weevils will be able to to eat them very well. And um, normally, most of them are not so hardy, so they are affected by many other diseases, and that's. Most of the hybrids look like this. Most of the higher room seeds look like this. Okay. How, how, how do we preserve our higher room seeds? Our original seeds. Uh, uh, look at this. Have you ever seen, have you seen this? Uh, go back to your community or your home. Have you seen these kind of, of beans in your area? Can you, can you relate to what I'm saying about the original beans that we had? Akina black bean, Akina, Akina rose cocoa. Yeah. Okay. Yes, save seed, save money. Yeah? Uh, hmm. Let me say here clearly, our health depend on the seed diversity that we have. Our health depend on the seed diversity we have. Why do we want to, see, why do I say that? Remember, we, uh, even we, if we don't have a lot of food, many type of seeds for example it is it could be one 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 type like malenge or pumpkin but many varieties you are able to eat many varieties those many varieties are able to grow in different areas meaning they are able to adapt to different areas meaning many from many people from many different areas are able to eat that variety because we have enough diversity. Uh, for any seed to become a seed, there must be pollination. I don't know, have you ever seen a seed without pollination? I don't think so. So um, when we are talking about pollination, for us it's very, very important. And we say like, for example, we organic farmers, sorry. We organic farmers, 
we must preserve our bees to help us in our pollination. There are seeds that are self-pollinated, there are seeds that are uh, cross-pollinated, some are cross-pollinated by wind, others are cross-pollinated by bees. So for anything to become a good seed, pollination must be there. Um, how, how do we, how, how, what do we know about pollination? Number one, pollination impact our seed quantity and quality. If a plant is not well pollinated, then the seed quantity goes low and the seed quality also goes low. For a maximum yield or very good quality or quantity, you must make sure that pollination occurs very well. Um, most of the most of the seeds are able. If you if you keep your farm well, and uh, you create environment for bees, you create a, you don't spray your your nini your farm, then you create good environment for good pollination. For the things that are um, self-pollinated, like tomatoes, beans, and lettuce, they are, they are, they are challenges. If you don't, uh, if you you don't again ensure there is uh, enough water for them to grow up very well, enough nutrients you must ensure that that plant is well maintained. For cross pollination, of course, you have to allow weeds, bad insects, like that one can, those ones can't even fit in the greenhouses or the shed nets. They will fit more outside, but, the, but for the self pollinated, they can do very well even in the greenhouse. Although for, for organic PC, if you can minimize the the event of having a greenhouse, the better. Uh, how do you control pollination? Uh, your plants require pollination either by wind, by insect, by birds. You can use them. Sometimes it will call for you to do it physically, even uh, especially when you are doing for for few plants, you can do it. You bring uh, this flower, and the I don't know how you're going to identify whether the 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 pollens are are a fit for that plant, but you you have to make sure that pollens fit they get into the stigma of the the other plant. For pollination, if you are suspecting your plants are when are not really getting pollinated, um, the other thing, um, if you you want to make sure that you're getting pure breed, again you will have to do. Sometimes you will have to do physical physical um, pollen pollination because you you have in mind what how you want to. You, what you want to get, the seed you want to get. So in that case, in that instance, you will, you will pollinate it on uh, yourself. Again, uh, to get a good variety, you will again need to know what kind, what what the other people are growing. So that so that when you're getting your seeds from another person, you are getting what exactly you want. Not, you're not mixing with other varieties. You want to get the pure breed, so you have to know what the other people have, uh, the other seed savers, so that you can bring in the only pure breed that you want. Um, the other thing is, um, if you want uh, a pure breed, pure breed uh, seed, 
again, after hard pollinating, you will have to exclude that plant from bees so because bees will come to pollinate it eh, with a different kind of pollen. So uh, after you pollinate it, exclude it. Yeah. When to harvest seeds? Ideal time to harvest seed varieties from a plant to plant. Most of the time, ensure before you start harvesting seed, that plant has grown to maturity. And exam uh, for example, those, those the, that ripen, you must make sure that, like for example, if you're, you want to preserve seeds for tomatoes, from tomatoes, or even from all the caca beets, you must make sure that plant is completely mature and even over like ripening. Some seed like uh, melon get ready when, the, when that fruit is ready for consumption. So you must make sure that um, whenever you are keep, you're selecting a seed eh, for saving, that seed has completely matured. Look at that maize. It will tell you, now I'm ready for harvesting because it has matured, it has even fallen down. So it is completely ready for, for harvesting. The same case to beans. Ensure they are completely dry. Some even start shattering. So that seed is ready for, 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 for harvesting and saving. Uh, for flowers, for flowers, like for sunflower, sometimes, when you let the sunflower to overstay in the, in the garden, they will be eaten by bugs, by birds. So wait until the flower seeds are out, they are completely mature, and they have like dropped the, the head. Then you will cut it and you, you bag it. You put something, in like the paper bag, not the plastic ones, but the khaki ones, you put in the, the head inside, then you dry it from a house or in-house, very dry um, house, but you just hang it somewhere so that it can continue drying, no moisture, no nothing that can bring water inside. And uh, so that plant is, uh, that, that head is kept dry. So it will continue drying and dropping the seeds into the bag. Um, yeah, for, for such seeds are like sunflower, even leeks, even uh, onions, yeah. There are other seeds, um, we call them dry seed and wet seed. Like for example, of dry bean seeds, beans, broccoli, cabbage, chilies, kale, maize, lettuce, pepper, all of them are dry uh, because they, they, they don't have water. They don't have sap in them. So they are easy to clean, they are easy to keep. Others are wet seeds, like cucumber, melon, passion, squash, tomatoes, like them. So when we are drying uh, dry seeds, when you want to keep dry seeds, you only wait for them to completely dry from the farm, then, then Okay, if you are in hurry, or for example, you see it's gonna rain before you harvest, before you remove them from the farm, then you can uh, harvest them when they are completely mature, then come and, and um, dry them. And, uh, and, um, you put them on the ground, the way we put them normally, they dry 
but ensure they are completely dry. We know them like the way this woman is doing to, re to remove the sharp from them. And then uh, for the ones that you want to, I, I forgot to say something. For these dry seeds, like for example, maize, and you want to keep the seeds, when they are in the, in the garden, you will need to identify the plants that you want to keep for seeds. Like for example, you have what you have in mind. Like for example, I need this, this maize because it has produced two maize, or I need this maize because it is big, or it has tall um, stock. So you will mark it from the farm. Uh, normally we say you, you tie a, a bright ribbon or just something. Like for example, you, if you can tie that maize with red ribbons, if it is a quarter, an acre or a whole land, you, the ones that you want to identify, you go tying them, tie them, and let them people let the people know that you have tied them for your seed. Then, um, when you're harvesting, when they are, you you let them grow together with the others. But now you will remove them from the farm just before you remove the others to make sure that they don't mix with the others. You will move them first, then you will keep them separate, and then you remove the other ones and keep them separately. So then the, you you continue with the other process, like like um, uh, removing from the crop. You clean them from the shaft, and then um, you you ensure the, the the water moisture content goes at a around five to seven, but even it is not bad, but it, if you are able to dry it completely, the better before you keep them. Those seeds like maize, beans, and rubber. But for the wet plants, uh, there's, there are those people, okay, you can still identify them when they are still in the garden. Like for example, for, for for tomatoes, you have seen that fruit that you really want. You feel like it has a nice shape. It has a um, good color. Um, the plant produces the maybe you don't want tomato with a lot of a lot of water, a lot of sap. So you want that doctor dry tomato. So you can decide this is the plant, this is the, the fruit I'm going to keep. So what you do, number one, you will remove, you, you will have a container and some water. Then you will remove all the seeds, you will put them in the water and uh, you will let them ferment for about um, two to three days. Then um, remove, the seeds, clean them, and dry them. And dry them. The, when you dry them, ensure you dry them under a shade, possibly, and um, ensure wherever you are drying them from, uh, you, uh, there is no moisture to avoid rotting. And uh, ensure, of course, they are not going to be invaded by pests because sometimes they're invaded by pests and you end up losing your crop. I mean, you end up losing your seeds. <sighs> Drying the wet seeds. Look at this. You can have a plate where you're drying your tomatoes, you, you put them all, uh, uh, even a newspaper, you can decide to put them uh, on, a, on a plate or a newspaper, and then you put them under a shade or somewhere for them to, to dry up. Um, keep them like, give them like um, three, four days 
or even the five days, depending on the on the situation of the weather at your place, then you'll be able to know whether they are dry or not. After you dry them completely, um, put them in a in a glass in a glass container. If you don't have, have a glass container, you use the khaki paper. Do not use the plastic bag uh, because they, they, you, you remember that seeds are, seeds are living, so you don't want to kill them. And then uh, keep them and ensure you, you label the container of what, what seed is there, variety of the seed, when you dry the seed and uh, just label that seed in a way that you will know this seed was from this, was from this uh, block in the garden like that. And then when you're keeping it, let it keep, uh, keep it away from uh, moisture and um, completely um, ensure there is um, it or the container is airtight to avoid any kind of rotting of the seed. Yeah, for the storage containers, look at here. You you see some uh, some contain glass containers. This is the khaki. I mean, uh, papers I'm talking about. There is this thing called um, silicon. Have you, I don't know whether you have seen that. this silica from the seeds. So if you get it, the better. You, you throw it inside the, that in, you take the excess moisture. Where do we store our seeds? Ensure they're in cool, dry, and dark place. Again, the container should be airtight. Some seeds are better stored in a refrigerator, especially some. And moisture content, that is the best. And then um, you can freeze them if you want but it's not a must. Um, problems that we face when you're keeping seeds. Number one, temperature variation. If you, your area is, um, is, um, is not stable with temperatures, then your seeds might really get, get um, some, some, some imbalances, like if it is too hot, sometimes the, that the um, innate viability, the viability of that seed, especially when subjected to too hot conditions, then uh, the viability becomes very low. Again, moisture fluctuation. If you're, you are not able to get the silica gel, in, inside the container, then um, and also remember to 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 be to remove it after seven days after you put it in the container. Then uh, that's there is a there will be a problem because that that seed will will have mold and eventually it will rot. So that that, that it will create it will. Whenever it will have um, moisture, of course now aflatoxin start getting in mold, 
and so you end up having no seed. After drying the seed, ensure there is no mold. Mold and moisture are the worst with the seeds whenever you're keeping your seeds. Again, we have insects. For example, we have um, rats and weevils. These again are challenges when we are keeping our, our seeds. Ensure you keep your seeds away from, from uh, rats and uh, from weevils. Um, how long we, can I keep my seeds? You may ask yourself that. Normally we say, if I, pro, I start keeping my seed this year, I, for the next like two to three years, that seed will be very good. But as the, the years go down, like five, six years, then viability, the, the viability goes down. So even if we talk about five years or seven years, just know, like the longer the seed stay, the, the lower the viability. So some, some seeds will stay even for five years, like cucumber, even, even radish. Some uh, seeds like uh, maize beans, generally for them we say for, the, for about five years. And there are some seeds that we don't want to keep for, for, for very long, like onions. We don't want to keep them for long. They will, they will um, not germinate. I don't know whether you have ever gone to a, an agro fair, but you buy seeds, you buy them, and then you plant, and none comes out. So um, it is important when you're buying seeds, then to check on the dates of packaging. <sighs> our seeds, our, especially our indigenous seeds are in threat, especially today. Why? Because we are encountering so many external things, like for example, the emergency or the coming in of genetically, organic, uh, genetically modified seeds. Of course, those seeds are patented, meaning uh, they belong to somebody else. And if it happens that there is uh, cross-pollination and your, your seeds are affected by the genetically mod the modified seeds, you end up having somebody's seed in your garden. So um, that is one challenge. Number two, especially those who are in Kenya, we have a punitive law that says farmers should not share their seeds because uh, they are not treated or they are not clean for replanting or they can take some pathogen, I don't know what. So, uh, and you ask yourself, sometimes back uh, for, for, for parents used, used to share seeds and there was nothing like uh, they are going to, when I bring my half, a seed in my farm, they're going to, to spoil my seeds. I don't know what happened, but now because the big companies want to sell their seed, of course, to us, definitely they will come up with this punitive law to prohibit the farmers from sharing seed. I don't know what about uh, other countries apart from Kenya, but in Kenya, it is illegal for a farmer to share seed with the other farmer. Again, we have uh, these hybrid seeds. Whenever we have a lot of hybrid seeds, even some people will feel lazy to save their own seed because they know even the next season, I'll still have seeds because I'll go to an agro vet, I'll get seed and not remembering that we have our own seeds that we need to preserve. Our own seeds are, are, are well adapted to our areas and um, they are not highly, they are resistant to, 
to pests and diseases. And so, and they are also resistant to our harsh weather conditions. And so, um, we, we feel like our indigenous seeds are still our best. Our best. Uh, how to how to know whether seeds are good? Like for example, when you have kept your seeds and you have preserved them for maybe for two years, how do you know whether your seeds are good for for now planting again? You can you do your test at home. What you do, how you do it? You just get a cotton wool and uh, wet it. If it is like um, you want to plant, like for example, you had preserved um, sukumawiki, and you want to know whether those seeds are viable, they are going to germinate. You put like you you're going to count like ten seeds. You put them on that cotton wool that is wet, then cover it. With a toilet paper and leave and maybe leave it there and ensure it is wet enough to ensure that it uh, maintain the moisture you can you can wrap it with a plastic bag the way you see the this the that for photo here you wrap it but remember to leave the sides open for aeration then after six days, come and open your 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 nini, your paper and count how many seeds have germinated. If you have kept you, you had kept like 10 seeds and nine have germinated, then you have 90% germination rate. If they have germinated four, then you have 40%. And we say, if you have tested your germination rate and your germination rate is below 75, my friend, don't take that, those seeds to the shamba because you end up wasting your time and uh, you, find, you, you, find, you, you come later to find that they did not even germinate. If they're not about 80%, 90%, just just leave it at 40 percent completely don't take it to your farm because you of course now when you're growing them you're using water you're using resources you're using your time so don't don't keep those ones okay we are headed to the last last uh, slides of my presentation and um maybe this is just for your reference of um, some seed information materials. You can read a lot of uh, seed materials like this one, Seed to Seed from Susanne, the new seed starter, breed your own vegetables, saving seeds, seed sowing and saving, vegetable seed saving. There are so many books that you, that you can refer to. Okay, and to my final thoughts, to be sure your seed breed, when you're planting your, your seeds, ensure that your seed that you want to preserve for life is a higher room variety. If it is a hybrid, then you're in trouble. If it is a GMO, then you're in trouble. Make sure you're preserving a higher room seed. Number two, consider starting up out with a self-pollinated plant. The self-pollinated plants like tomatoes, they are better because you don't have issues with pollination that brings, uh, that uh, bridges your bleed. Again, for close pollinated plants, grow one variety and share with other seed savers. Like for example, if your farm is one acre, 
just ensure that one variety is the one that you're growing in that one acre or whatever the space you have, ensure you don't have two varieties because they are going to cross pollinate. If, if, if you want to, again, oh, I've said here, share it with other seed savers, is to ensure that even if yours gets spoiled, you still have some other people who have the same, same variety so that you don't you lose it, all of you. Um, again, whenever you, are, you want to, to plant to ensure that you get the best seed, test your seed before planting. The seed germination rate, again, you don't want to, to plant a seed, then stay like for a whole, a whole one, one season, then you just get very few, few uh, seeds that are germinated. So ensure you test your seed germination. Um, here is a small boy and somebody who is asking him, are you sure you want you also seed? And uh, um, she's giving an advice. Can I send you to see chef? Dibiak, Bayoji, or Seed Savers, Tran about seeds and seed saving. And for me, I'll say, come, you are wel welcome. The other organizations like uh, Seed Savers, like um, Bayoji and Dibiak, they also do seed saving and they have a lot of good work in um, seed saving. So it is very important. Let us save our seeds to save our future. Our seeds, our heritage, our food sovereignty. Remember always to share seeds. We are farmers. So we want to keep sharing our seeds. Thank you. Madam Latemo. Thank you so much, Esther. I'm taking, I'm standing in for Latemo. Thank you for the beautiful presentation you've made. And uh, I'm going now to moderate the question and answer session. And uh, I'll be reading the questions and then Esther, you can answer or ask any of the other trainers in the room to help. So the first question is on a germination process of garlic gloves this is from uh, petet is asking how he can uh, move from the gloves to seedlings esther germination uh, repeat that question uh, madam grace yes petet is asking about the process of germination of garlic gloves to seedlings okay uh-huh do we take questions and then we answer later or we can just answer? I think you can answer that one as you move. Yeah, uh, for, for garlic, you only need to ensure that the clove, uh, the, the, that uh, small clove, you split it from the mother plant. Um, let us say you have this one bulb. You remove all the cloves and ensure each clove has has each clove has some pimple look like pimples there down for rooting because that that normally that is a mistake we do we remove garlic and we don't ensure that they have the rooting pimples so whenever you keep it for rooting the roots don't come out if you happen to cut that garlic and uh, you find you have cut that area with, with the small pimples. They are down. Uh, that one is not good for germination. So you can decide to put it in a plastic bag. Some people will put it in a plastic bag for, for faster germination. You, you, you remove all the clouds, then you put them in a, a, like a small a paper bag, like the ones we used to put in uh, sugar. Then you give it like uh, four days or five, 
and then you will see some shoot coming out. Then when you plant and, and, and there will be some roots, then if you want to let it grow the roots up to a level that they can be plant transplanted, you will keep like for two weeks and then they will have developed the roots. Then when you are planting the, that, that garlic, ensure you put it upside down. The roots should touch the, the root very well, uh, the soil and cover, cover that garlic. Even the, the, the green thing that comes out, make sure you cover it underground for it to shoot again. Yeah. And ensure whenever you're planting garlic, you put enough manure for, it, for the germination because garlic is an onion, is in onion family. And onion family, you know, they are heavy feeders. feeders. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Esther. You've answered so well. I'm sure Petet is okay now. The other question uh, asked by Emmanuel is asking um, the use of cow dung in relation to seed preservation? Yeah, initially, um, uh, even at uh, my place, my home place, my granny used to preserve the, her seeds, maize, with the soot or cow dung. I don't know the idea behind that, but all, the, all I know is that they, they were not attacked by pests, especially the weevils. They never attacked that maize. So um, I don't want to say what is, what, what the, the, what the active ingredient are there. All what I know is that they do the, a good job. Yes, I see Ferdinand uh, as asked to help on uh, answering that question. Ferdinand, yeah. kindly take over. Yes, the use of cow dung um, is a traditional, it's a tradition actually, and um, they actually do the burning of uh, the cow dung so that forms uh, some carbon uh, layer. And um, you know, uh, our there was a lot of uh, indigenous wisdom in our um, traditions because the dried cow dung also contains the, the beneficial microbes. So that uh, a combination of these uh, microbes around that uh, carbon layer, that also keeps uh, the seed more viable. And uh, it's just about viability, uh, keeping the seed viable. And it was uh, through observation that uh, seeds that have um, that carbon layer or are, are preserved with either the ashes or uh, the dry, a cow dung which has been made into powder will actually contain um, the beneficial microbes which will help in preserving life. Uh, this is just a practice and when we talk about agroecology as a practice and the integration of um, the traditional wisdom and the knowledge um, is important. Uh, a modern science gives us the knowledge to see what is contained in that uh, cow dung and what makes those seeds more viable. And uh, that integration is very important. That knowledge is very important. Thank you. Yes, Ferdinand, thank you so much. Maybe you can say something about the smoking of a seed as well, having talked about the indigenous knowledge. Maybe yes, you can smoking, comment about that. Yes, the smoking of seed um, is just about the carbon layer that is formed. You know, smoke uh, has the carbon dioxide. So when you, is the heat, uh, moderate heat, not uh, so much, but the formation of the soot, soot which is just carbon, uh, uh, that is a protective layer. So some of those uh, insects, uh, especially the boring uh, insects, the family of uh, the beetles, uh, that usually the brachids and the beetles, uh, especially on maize and, and beans, uh, when they find that protective layer and that is not good food for them, so it becomes uh, not, not suitable uh, stuff, stuff for them. It's the same way when, when uh, we have the fungicides and the copper-based uh, materials that are actually used in, uh, in the hybrids, uh, that when the, 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 the insect uh, starts boring, uh, it finds that there is that layer which is not uh, food. So it just leaves that. 
and uh, uh, apart from um, you know the traditional knowledge you know the modern science where they're using the chemicals the chemicals is harmful to even the soil uh, microbes while the carbon is good uh, for the soil you just need the carbon and you know it breaks uh, down it's a natural product and there's no harm thank you thank you ferdinand another question back to you esther Yes. The other question is on the difference between a seed bank and a gene bank. This is a question from uh, from Annie. Seed bank and a gene bank. Yes, seed bank. It's where we just keep seeds. Any seed, any seed that you want to keep. But gene bank, there are those seeds that are highly valued, valued um, um, they are extincting, like so they are they are kept like specified seeds. They are kept there. If you want them, you have to to, to get records about what you want. A certain gene, like specified seed. Uh, but it is also a, a seed bank. It is also a bank. I, I mean, somewhere seeds are bank are, are, are kept. But for gene bank are specific for a, that certain variety of seed, that certain um, um, desirable quality. With it. But for seed bank is just where you can keep like the way we we keep seeds, uh, any kind of seed, but you want to preserve it. Yeah. So in addition, yes, yeah, yeah. In addition, yes. Uh, in addition to what Esther has uh, said, the difference also, uh, apart from uh, the records, and the records here, um, is that uh, for a gene bank, there is uh, the classification and characterization of the particular seed. You know, any plant uh, type or even animal type, uh, you have the kingdom, the class, the family, the species, the genus. So that characterization, so that you even have the gene uh, of the, a specific uh, um, species, uh, so that clear distinction, you can have, for example, a maize, a you have all the different varieties and there are so many you can have even 100 different uh, varieties but now they actually have distinct uh, characteristics uh, because they've been characterized so uh, you talk about a gene bank and uh, for uh, a seed banker uh, so this is just the storage you can do the simple recording you know this is just maize or this is beans and um, you've just done the storage so there is a difference between just a story and uh, and and characterization and the classification. Uh, in a gene bank, there is also storage, but in addition to that, there is uh, uh, characterization and the classification. Classification is most 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 distinct and important. Thank you. Thank you, Ferdinand, for the addition. And actually, I think that is one question that uh, appeared severally. But as you've uh, clearly put. It is um, a gene bank is where seeds are kept for specific genotypic characteristics, as my colleagues have uh, rightfully put. The other question is on uh, viability, and I think Esther answered this so well, like the long term, short term. So somebody, Augustine, was asking on uh, how long do I store my seeds? I don't know if Esther, you still need to say one word, but I am sure you answered so well when you were trading. Esther, maybe you can mention in passing. Yeah, um, as I said there before, um, whenever you're keeping your seeds, remember uh, from, from one, uh, year one to year three, those seeds normally are very good. If you have uh, freezed them or you have uh, refrigerated them, the uh, vi viability can even better be better up to 10 years. But if you have not refrigerated the seeds uh, from three years, then uh, just know your, your viability of the, your seed viability is getting low, 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 low as we go by the years. Yeah. 
Thank you, Esther. The other question is uh, from uh, Petet. I don't know exactly what he meant, but he's asking how do I learn about seed breeding in Kenya, especially on basil seeds? I don't know if he meant where do I learn or... Um, so the question is, according to him, is how? Maybe you can answer both how and where he can learn about seed breeding in Kenya. Uh, I'm not so sure what he want to ask. Uh, because I, I hear uh, the word basil, maybe he yes. want to know specific uh, how to grow basil, mm -hmm. and um, hmm. and I don't know because learning about seed saving and and any if you come at a sea shape, if you come if you go to biology, if you go to seed savers, if you go to GBAQ, you learn about seed saving and um, multiplication. But now when you go to that specific plant, you will need to know which variety you want. And uh, if it is for export and you, or if it is for local use, because again, that goes to a, a different level. Yeah. Thank you. So I don't know whether Ferdinand had a, a different uh, thinking about it. No, it's the same. I think what, what you're saying, because this, the purpose of this uh, process is actually to support farmers. Huh? Uh, the objective of this uh, uh, discussion here and uh, refer to support farmers understand, but players can support farmers understand. But uh, as you rightly put, if it's for export or for market, then that's at a different level that you need to know uh, the specific type of uh, basil and uh, its requirement, its market requirements, uh, so that you can be able to um, see how you can save that seed and 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 you can uh, grow. But basil are usually easy uh, to grow; they are not very difficult. Thank you. All right. The other question is on potatoes. Mkirote is asking, how do we save potato seeds? Wow. Hey, potatoes. Yes. Potatoes, um, and Kirote, I want to let you know that today potatoes are being patented. Meaning you can't, um, there are those seeds that uh, you can't just keep. But anyway, uh, just like any other seed, for potatoes you can, uh, you can keep it, but now you need to select the seed that you want to keep you want to the you want you must select it you must uh, save it and for for uh, potatoes you will need to keep growing it every now and then to keep planting it because if you keep it for too long then it it will spoil up um I am not so sure what exactly you wanted to mean in Kirote about the sweet, uh, sweet potatoes, I mean potatoes, but uh, like any other seed, select the seed that you want to keep, but don't keep it like in the shelves. Plant it, multiply it, and ensure you follow all the procedures to ensure that you keep multiplying that seed and it keeps growing stronger. So at the end of the day, you will have many and you'll have preserved the variety that you desired. Yeah. Can I, can I add you. something? Yes. Can I add something here? Yes. yes, yes. If you, if you want to keep uh, Irish or English potatoes for a long time, then you need to uh, come up with a root cellar a root cellar is, um, is an underground storage, or you can just dig a hole um, on the ground <laughs> and maybe have a plastic uh, container mm -hmm. and put in your, your seeds inside and cover, and then cover with, with the soil or with other materials. So that will keep your potatoes mm -hmm. for about two, three months before they start sprouting, um, so that now you can uh, plant them. But um, storage of potatoes is a bit tricky because if after two weeks they start sprouting um, that is if they are not kept well but a root cellar will work so well 
for Irish potatoes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Derito. I actually forgot about the Rusena and uh, the way it is good. Yeah. Yeah. I hope Kim Kirote has gotten the answer. I don't know if this is the follow up question or it's actually a different question from Kirote again. She's asking about uh, the large scale farmers. Like, for example, she's giving an example of four acres that how can they see, save seeds? Uh, is there specific bags for seed saving? So maybe she's asking about specific uh, containers for large scale farms to keep the seeds. Uh, like quick seeds now, the potatoes. She's not specific, she just mentioned seed save, seeds. Because if, if it is like for, for, for cereals, for four acres is not so difficult. He will only need to, to mark the, the seeds that you want to select for saving and uh, dry them the way, the way it's dried normally and um, keep it uh, in, in a safe way, like I explained there before. But for tomatoes, four acres, I mean, for potatoes, four acres, uh, she will really need that rucella. Yeah. And maybe right. for cereals. Yes. Maybe for cereals like maize um, or beans, the, the, the ones that, that are known as dry seeds, and they are not if they are not kept for a long time, that is if it's a, a big uh, piece of land, she can use hermetic bags. These are bags that have several layers of uh, plastic inside, and then outside is the normal, normal um, material. But then that cannot keep the seed for long uh, because the seed will lose its viability. Um, but uh, a seed bank can keep any amount of seeds that, that they want, as long as the, the condition and the, the environment inside is okay. So it's, it's, it's possible to save seeds even for 10 acres. It doesn't matter as long as the seeds are saved well and they have followed all the rules and regulations of seed saving. Uh -huh. Thank you, Sam. There's also another question. I think potatoes uh, is eliciting a lot of reaction online. There's a Masiza asking, can you use the seeds that are gotten from the potato fruit and not the potato itself? Yeah, yeah. there is a lady who used to plant the, that, that uh, potato fruit seed. And okay, she, it, it's quite a lot of work. I want to assure you that's a lot of work. But you can do it and get pure plant the way you wanted it. Because now that produces exactly what you want. But you see, like uh, the, other, the other potato, the seed itself, the e potato, the one that we eat, that will just hurriedly give you food and seed. But that one, the fruit from the I mean, seed from the small fruit. You'll have to like take it to a nursery. At a, you you see the way I've talked about saving seed from wet uh, plant, wet fruits like wet seeds, seeds. wet seeds mm -hmm. like passion. That's the procedure you use to save that um, to save that seed, I mean, to grow that uh, full crop, yeah. Again, again, Esther, yeah. the, the viability of the, uh, of the potato seed, viability is very low. Yes. It has to undergo a lot of processes so that uh, it, it germinates. And that's why um, mostly the seed is gotten from the potato yeah. itself, because it has, it has to be taken to the lab and uh, they use, um, the rooting hormone, the, the germination hormones, it's a very big process. Like it, out of 10, maybe only one can germinate. Yeah. So it's a very tedious process to take it into the lab. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, I've also seen uh, some people germinating potatoes from cutting. You see the, the way we have cuttings, they do the cuttings and then they put them in the rooting hormone and then they germinate some root and then they plant. 
and it will also give some some uh, potatoes but also that one is a delicate one so um i, I still go back to the potatoes yeah to, to the potato seed mm -hmm. thank you esther i'm going to have to ask around that two three questions so that you can answer together because they are similar Elizabeth Marunga, I think she's from Zimbabwe, is asking about how to harvest seeds from cabbages. Mary Thoku is asking about uh, getting seeds from ginger and turmeric and how we can plant them. So maybe you can answer the, those questions together. So we yeah. have cabbage, ginger, and turmeric. Yeah, for cabbage, you'll have to eat that cabbage to overgrow. You let it overgrow, Okay, sometimes some cabbages will not produce some seed, but uh, some will. But now, or to get the seeds, you let it grow, 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 grow completely, overgrow. And then it will start producing something that will come from the center of that cabbage and grow like a flower. Then you wait for it to produce the flower and uh, get the seed. That is, um, and then for the for the cabbage seed, remember the 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 shatter. So at one point you'll need to to cut the the stalk and put it in a bag and dry them from inside the house or somewhere. But um, because you, if you leave it in the garden, it will just shatter. With the turmeric and ginger, that is so easy because you you're going to use the the, the normal ginger that we have, but then you choose the one that has some some things like pimples, and uh, those things like look like pimples that are the germinating place. They will eventually uh, okay. If you want to germinate them, you can decide to put them in the soil and wait for a while to for them to come out, or you can just decide to to put the way we put a uh, in a garden like, like the way I had said we germinate the garlic you put small small pieces that have those small pimples in a paper bag in an iron bag then you let it start like getting some some root not root really but some something comes out of those small pimples greenish like some then shoot. you yes like a good a shoot comes out Whenever you see that shoot, then you go and bury that ginger in, in the garden. Ensure you also feed the soil very well because also ginger and turmeric, they are not heavy feeders, but I don't know why they are told they are not heavy feeders because they don't grow well where there is a um, very, um, they grow well in a fertile land. Yeah. Can I add something on? Um, yes, yes. On, on um, cabbages. Yeah. Yeah, cabbages and the carrots, and, um, some other families there require very cool condition for them to produce seeds. So it depends on where you are, uh, so so that you produce seeds of, uh, on on cabbages. So so um, uh, a semi arid or hot condition cabbages will never produce seeds unless you follow some other scientific uh, processes where you approve the cabbage when it's fully mature, you put it in a fridge. And then it stays for about two weeks and then we turn it back again to the soil. That's when now it will crack up here and now produce the shoot for the, for the seed. But uh, if you're in a cool um, climate, uh, it's, it's cold, cold climate, it's easy to produce the cabbage seed. So it's not easy. It's not everywhere that cabbage will produce seed. Thank you so much, Mr. Derito. I actually oversaw that because I come from Kinagop and uh, whenever we want to to get seeds from carrot and um, cabbage, we can get them because the place is so cool. I didn't remember the other side of hot area. Yes, it is very true. Whenever you want to get uh, seed from cabbage, you can either, you, you only either um, refrigerate it if you're in wet, in, if you're in dry condition, or you, you produce it from a cool area, like in the mountainous region. Yeah. Thank you, Esther. Two questions as we come towards the end of the question and answer session uh, about the seed bank. 
Annie is also asking to what temperature can we refrigerate the seeds? And uh, the other question from the same Annie is on uh, accessioning in the seed bank. So he's asking, what about accessioning in the seed bank? And the other question is, to what temperature can we refrigerate the seeds? Did it take over? Mm -hmm. Oh, the little is not there. Okay. Ah, uh, for for. Sorry, I didn't get I didn't get the second question. Okay, let me repeat the questions. The first question is, what about accessioning in the seed bank? That is one question. The other question is, to what temperature can we refrigerate the seeds? Both questions are from Annie. S seeds seeds can be um stored even in the negative negative degrees doesn't matter uh, because um the, the 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 colder it is the better for the seed and uh, the longer it will it will last as long as the seeds have been processed very well and um they have tested the germination uh rates for the seed and it's viable so it can last as long as you want as long as it's cool so negative, that is still fine. The second question is not very clear for me. I don't, Esther, can you answer that? I'm, I'm not also getting... not so clear. That's why I was giving a sessioning in seed bank. What's that? Uh, I am I... also not sure about the question. A sessioning. A W C E S I O N I N G in the seed bank. Maybe it's, uh, uh, I don't know, let me just, try. maybe it, it, she means about access, huh? um, you know, how do you access it? I don't know, maybe if that, that is the case, unless uh, she gets, I mean, she puts it clear. If it, to access, ask, huh? if it is to access the seed banks, seed banks are all over. Uh, Esther has already said that uh, if you're in Western Kenya, you go to Bioji. If you are in, um, around Thika, you come to Jibiak. If you're in uh, Gilgil, you go to seed servers. If you are in um, uh, Kikuyu, you go to Seychelles. If it's accessing. All right. Yes. And, and uh, um, organizations and also farmers are, uh, and multipliers can encourage farmers to also now uh, do their seed saving. Uh, so that yeah. uh, within after a season, they can also, especially those seeds that uh, they are very sure of and uh, are disappearing and uh, of, of high demand so that uh, um, all of us can actually uh, uh, have that um, spirit of saving seeds and also be part of a larger movement. Thank you. Okay. Let me read two inputs from uh, our followers. One is Biwot Elias. He's saying, worked for potato project in Elge Omaraquet County and the potato cold stores made of charcoal with water drip on top can go below six degrees, can save seeds for long up to one year. Also use of DLS stores and underground pits. But he's saying, remember any increase, increased change in temperature can uh, lead to deterioration of the seeds. The other input is from Beatrice Waiyaki. She's saying, the best way for ginger is to sort and bury in soil for one month. I think he's talking about the germination of um, get, uh, getting ginger seeds. That is, those are the two inputs. And finally, these are the last questions. Uh, I don't even know how to ask this one here, Mami, but Irene is asking if lentils can grow in highland areas. Well, Mami is asking, what is the spacing of planting target or saga or spider plant? and how it's used as vegetable? Those are the final questions. Thank you for that. Um, for sageti planting, most of the time we don't put uh, sageti in the in nursery. We put them direct to the beds. And um, normally we say for you not to put so much or to cross space them, uh, if it is possible, Add, if you have one spoon of uh, sageti seeds, add two spoons of sand, the construction sand. That will ensure good spacing when you're putting them on the, on the, on the bed. Um, 
And again, for spaghetti, they are not so difficult to grow. Uh, for cooking, hey, let me let me <laughs> request somebody else to talk about the cooking of spaghetti as vegetable. Because, but I know it's very good vegetable. I have eaten them, but I don't know how to cook them. Maybe Ferdinand from Western Kenya. Uh, thank you. Um, Sageto, the spider, spider, um, spider hub, uh, yeah, is uh, normally mixed with, uh, you call it terere or uh, amaranth, uh, because it's usually bitter. So it's usually cooked together with, um, with uh, amaranth to reduce the bitterness. And um, there are various methods of cooking. So we have the traditional method of cooking, normally in, uh, in, in a cooking pot. And um, first of all, they are um, washed. Uh, I mean, they are clean. I mean, wash. You pluck um, the soft parts, and uh, also the flowers are edible. And the soft parts, not just the leaves, but the soft parts. And uh, then, uh, if you have the two mixtures, or even three mixtures, like the African nepasa, uh, that makes it even uh, softer and reduces the, the bitterness. I remember the bitterness is because of uh, an alkaloid, but uh, it's got a lot of nutrients when you mix the three of them or the two of them. I normally put in a pot, cooking pot, um, boiled, and uh, we nowadays we do not recommend that uh, you you pour the the water, but uh, instead now you once you just put some little water once it's boiling or simmering, then you add some um, some milk or some um, some cream, and uh, once it's uh, softened enough, I mean after about uh, twenty thirty minutes, then you can uh, uh, eat. And uh, you know the purpose of uh, adding milk or uh, cream, uh, this is to preserve the vitamins because uh, uh, the green vegetables have got the, um, the ADEC uh, vitamins, uh, A, D, E, and K. These are fat soluble vitamins. And again, just borrowing from our traditions, uh, our ancestors and, and, and um, our forefathers knew that these uh, vegetables need some preservation. So the, 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 the milk or the cream has got the oils, uh, I mean the fat that preserves that vitamin. So the vitamins will dissolve in that fat. And that is the most important uh, uh, thing in the cooking. Otherwise, there are those now who just use, I mean, they can cook like skumawiki. You may not eat it if you cook like skumawiki because it will become, it will be very bitter because of the alco alkaloid. But when you mix it with the others, uh, it will have that uh, little bitterness uh, reduced. And then uh, if you keep on adding more milk, um, then you, 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 you find that the, the bitterness uh, disappears. But then, but then you have a lot of fiber and you also have the, 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 the vitamins uh, are preserved. And uh, normally in the traditional world, they even don't add um, uh, salt. Uh, but nowadays now people add some, some salt when they are cooking those ones. Thank yep. you, Ferdinand. Uh, I think you've not, uh, Esther, you did not answer the lentils growing in highland areas. Can they grow? I really lentils. waiting for the answer. Yes, lentils. Uh -huh. yeah. That will be so difficult because they do very well in a, in, a, in a very dry area, in the dry areas. Otherwise, uh, lentils, when they are growing in cool areas, they will give you a lot of good leaves, good mm -hmm. leaves, very nice looking. But uh, harvest from the seed, I am not so sure whether you get in anything. They like uh, a very dry condition. Correct. Arid and semi-arid regions like uh, Machakos area, you know, Eastern in, in general, they do so well. But in highlands, I doubt. Mm -hmm. So finally, I think we will not take more questions, but. This, there is this one from uh, Rutendo Makichi from Zimbabwe. She's asking if there is any organic chemicals that can be used to increase seed germination or viability before planting. But she's asking about if there is a rooting hormone or something that is organic. Yeah, there is. There is, Mr. Derito. 
Can we do the rice? The rice? Yes, there is um, a rooting hormone that uh, that is made organically, um, where you use rice. Use rice. Mm -hmm. um, and also you soak rice in water and then you'll add, uh, you'll add some molasses. You will also add um, a few other ingredients. I think I better send that to the group. Let me send it to the group so that you yeah. understand. But but it's it's done organically. Yeah. But you use you use rice or or some some people also use lentils. But you just mix with other ingredients, and it, it works so well as a rooting hormone. Yeah. Maybe there's a very 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 maybe small recipe. I don't know whether the the person uh, maybe has a pen and paper, but just very, very, very short one. Uh, you can use lentils. Huh? So I have about uh, one kilogram of lentils huh? and uh, soak them um, in water and um, remove them and put in a um, cloth uh, container or newspaper so that uh, uh, they germinate. Huh? Leave them to germinate for about two, um, three days. Once you see them starting to germinate, you crush them and uh, and 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 mix with the two liters of water, and then you you just sieve, and then um, dip your seeds, uh, cover or just dip them before you can uh, do the planting. And, but there are so many other rooting hormones. I think we can have another further discussion there on the rooting hormones. Uh, you can also use uh, coconut water uh, and, and lemon juice. Um, you can also use um, maize. That one is very simple, just the fresh one uh, seed, but we can have another forum for that. Sure. Thank you, Ferdinand, and thank you, some you talked of sharing something with the group that would be awesome and um as we come to the end i see dr mihindo in the room can you give um can you make a closing yes, remark that's sorry Looks, looks like the chair is far. So I'll, uh, before we wind up, maybe I'll give uh, a <laughs> <Esther. laughs> Aha, so I'll give a I'll give a Yes, Meanwhile, maybe Esther, you can give your closing remarks. If he gets in, he will say something. My closing remarks are just what is on the screen. Let us save our seeds. This is this to save our future. Our seeds, our heritage, our food sovereignty. If we don't have seed, then we don't have food, and we don't have food seed. I mean, we don't have food freedom. We will always depend on others. Remember, wherever you have seeds, share with your uh, friends and neighbors to preserve the desirable variety. Thank you. Thank, thank you yes, for listening to me. Thank, thank you for listening and thank you for sharing. Um, I liked the questions and um, I hope I did not bore you so much. Thank you, um, Esther. Yeah. That was a wonderful presentation. Uh, yes. Dr. are you in now? Uh -huh. Looks, if, well, if Dr. is not ready, then maybe any master trainer with something before I can hand over 
to Ratemo to close for us officially. Sam, Ferdinand. Yeah, thank you for uh, the good questions and uh, I hope uh, the mass players have uh, grasped something and uh, they can be able to share with uh, uh, the farmers. Thank you. Thank you, Ferdinand. Sam? Yeah, I think the, the end uh... The end product of all this, what you're doing is the farmer. And so let us all put our might so that we reach out to our farmers so that uh, we can help them to grow food. We need food in Kenya. We don't want to struggle because now if farmers don't get the information and even the right or correct information, then they'll not do a, a good job. So let us take correct information, right information. Um, yeah, wherever we are, let us do something so that we grow food. And, and not just food, but uh, sustainable uh, production of food, which is clean, healthy, and affordable. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Let me also take this opportunity to appreciate Esther. You've done a very good job, job well done. And uh, the team for supporting in answering the questions. And of course, the participants, you've been very active. And I've realized there is a lot of interest when it comes to seed, seed saving. And uh, maybe Pelham will uh, organize for other forums in the future where we can build on the areas that has been elicited a lot of uh, reaction. Back to you, Ratemo. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Grace, for moderating the session. Yeah, I want us to now close for the, for the day. But before we do that, I want to invite Ferdinand to just talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a session on livestock integration. We have people online what do they expect from uh, the trainers and the team leader. So just a brief. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, um, livestock, livestock integration is uh, important in uh, agroecology farming systems because when we are talking about diversity, how do we integrate these and uh, how do we recycle, especially in the area of uh, recycling uh, nutrients that uh, livestock actually complement um, the cropping systems and the uh, agroforestry uh, systems. So uh, I think it would be good to see how that complementarity uh, happens and why that is important in our uh, creating our, our our sustainable food systems. Thank you. Thank you, Ferdinand. You heard it from the trainer. So tomorrow from 10 to 12, please tune in so that we can learn about livestock integration. As you know, the small livestock, big livestock. So everyone or every farmer may have some livestock. And it's important we learn how to integrate in our farming systems. So without further ado, I want to request all the master trainers online to just switch on the camera so that our viewers and listeners can see who is online, including myself. So we want to say thank you and uh, see you tomorrow at 10. So bye-bye from Thailand. You can just and say bye to our listeners. Thank you so much, Ratemo. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow.